In the United States, sickle cell disease affects an estimated 100,000 people. Patients with severe sickle cell have a very poor quality of life with frequent pain episodes and trips to the hospital. Now, there is no universal cure for the disease and patients typically only live to their 40s. At 47 years old, Carla Howard has already outlived the average life expectancy. She has made a decision to do everything she can to make a difference for the next generation. Let's go behind the mystery. Living with sickle cell for the last 47 years of my life has allowed me the ability to definitely make sure that I'm advocating for individuals. I have the pleasure of reaching out to parents of newborns who have been diagnosed with sickle cell to give them the perspective of someone who lives with sickle cell on a daily basis. I just try to reach back and help someone else to make sure that they can live a much fuller life than I did as a kid. The Balancing Act met with Dr. Poonam Malik, director of the Comprehensive Sickle Cell Center at Cincinnati Children's. Sickle cell disease is an inherited mutation in the hemoglobin gene. Hemoglobin gives oxygen to the tissues. Normal red blood cells are round, donut-shaped, and flexible, and go smoothly through blood vessels. But sickle red blood cells are hook-shaped or crescent-shaped every time they give up oxygen. And they clump and clog blood vessels, limiting blood flow causing intense pain and organ damage. Fetal hemoglobin is an anti-sickling hemoglobin that is present at birth within the first six to nine months of life. The gene that makes fetal hemoglobin switches off. In sickle cell disease, this is when you start making the mutant sickle hemoglobin. So if there is some amount of fetal hemoglobin, it prevents the sickle hemoglobin from clumping and changing the shape of red blood cells. Sickle cell disease is a lifelong debilitating disease. They can develop complications like acute chest syndrome, stroke, chronic anemia that causes fatigue. Children with sickle cell disease are more prone to infections and infectious complications. And the disease just slowly erodes their organs. So over time, they get develop chronic organ damage and then loss of function of different organs. Growing up with sickle cell was very tough. Subconsciously, I dealt with a lot of angst and fear because I didn't know when sickle cell would arise in my life. Through my high school years, I was hospitalized at least seven times, mostly during the holidays. You know, I got to know a lot of people on the floor who was there dealing with the same things I was dealing with and forming that type of community helped, but it still was difficult. Sickle cell pain crisis causes sudden onset, very severe pain. Uh, a lot of this pain is confined to the limbs and the back. Patients often get admitted for painful crisis and they're in pain for days. And this requires them to be on lifelong painkillers. So the common treatment for sickle cell disease is really treating the symptoms. So we, if they have pain, we give them pain medicines. If they have acute chest, we treat the symptoms of pneumonia. We will give them oxygen. We might even do an exchange transfusion so that we can reduce the amount of sickle hemoglobin in their blood. Most people see this vibrant smile, but don't really understand that I'm probably in some sort of pain in that moment. As an adult, I have been in the hospital five times, with two of those times leaving me in the hospital for up to two months. Sickle cell is not something I wish on anyone. It is not for the faint of heart. It's difficult because of the stress that it brings about, the uncertainty, the life expectancy. I personally want to continue to see sickle cell treatments advanced so that the younger generation can have a better perspective of life than I'm living today. Coming up, a potentially one-time curative therapy in clinical trial. Stay with us.
Welcome back. The current management strategies for sickle cell have their limitations. Let's go back to Dr. Malik for more. The only definitive uh, curative option for sickle cell disease is actually a bone marrow transplant. In bone marrow transplant, you need a match donor, which is a limitation. The second thing is despite the best match, you can have immune side effects. And the third major thing with bone marrow transplant is that you have to wipe out all the disease stem cells uh, with very heavy doses of chemotherapy. But these are available to only about 15% of patients. So 85% of patients with sickle cell disease do not have a curative option currently. And they are on disease modifying therapies like uh, hydroxyurea, a medicine that can increase the fetal hemoglobin. It has to be taken daily, and it has to be titrated to the right dose that would, that would not cause side effects. In some patients, it doesn't work as well. It doesn't increase the fetal hemoglobin. Patients want a curative therapy uh, that is a one-time treatment, and then they don't have to worry about their sickle cell disease. Research from Dr. Malik's lab at Cincinnati Children's is providing hope. She's developed a one-time, potentially curative investigational gene therapy called ARU1801 that is currently in a clinical trial. I wanted to develop a therapy that would be universally applicable to all patients. For all blood disorders, you can actually genetically correct the blood stem cells and give them back to the patient. The advantage is that these are the patient's own cells, so every patient has this option. And because they are the patient's own cells, they do not come with the immune side effects you get from bone marrow transplant. This is a one-time but lifelong therapy. The way gene therapy is done is that we first collect the blood stem cells, and that's just like a blood donation procedure. These stem cells are then genetically modified. A few weeks later, the patient gets a dose of chemotherapy, and then they get infused with the gene-modified stem cells. After the patients get their stem cells, they make blood cells from the genetically modified cells. ARO1801 is an investigational gene therapy for sickle cell disease where an anti-sickling fetal hemoglobin gene is delivered into blood stem cells. That is a potentially one-time curative therapy. We collect the blood stem cells and modify them with an anti-sickling uh, fetal hemoglobin gene. And we give them back to the patients with a single lower dose chemotherapy that has much fewer side effects, but does uh, produce the desirable anti-sickling effect. All gene therapy and gene editing trials for sickle cell disease are currently investigational therapies, and they are all in clinical trials. It is very important for patients to enroll in clinical trials because that's how we make progress. We learn a lot from uh, clinical trials because they are done systematically and in a very controlled manner. Um, they have a lot of oversight by regulatory agencies and the FDA so that they are done safely. If I'm personally asked to participate in a clinical trial that I am eligible for, I fully participate. Clinical trials is definitely the one thing that can help future generations of sickle cell disease patients. My hope is that there becomes a treatment that is universal across all individuals living with sickle cell, just to give this community the gift of life. For more information, you can visit MomentumTrials.com and ClinicalTrials.gov. You can always visit our website, TheBalancingAct.com. We'll be right back.